Awesome. So as Jeff just pointed out, and as most of you already know, governments around the world are totally broken. They are rife with corruption, with greed, with inefficiency, and with ineptitude. Governments are total folly, and all they bring is nastiness to society. Speaking of corruption, let me just provide an example of this real fast, and then we'll jump into the main point. Who remembers in 2007 and 2008, the mortgage and the housing bubble collapse? By show of hands, it's hard for me to see because of the lights, but I assume people are raising, yeah, I see a few people raising their hands. So anybody who can recall the 2008, 2007 financial collapse, they probably remember that most of these corporation and banks who screwed everybody over were considered too big to fail. Everybody remember that slogan, too big to fail? So what happened was the governments in their cronyistic relationships with the banks and with the companies, they bailed out all of these banks and all of these individuals who didn't deserve to be bailed out. They should have been allowed to fail. This is a perfect example of political graft or corruption that really makes it impossible for us to trust a government. But I'm really happy to be here today to share with you all that we are entering into a new time period, a new epoch, and we are creating technologies that will allow us to restructure and reorder society so that it makes sense so that we can actually live freer and more prosperous. So this new type of technology that's coming into existence is referred to as blockchain. By show of hands, who's familiar with blockchain technology? Got a couple of hands here. So you may remember the first blockchain-based application was Bitcoin, which is a cryptocurrency. And now we have Bitcoin Cash, which facilitates easy payments and is super inexpensive. But the cryptocurrencies aren't the only application in blockchain technology. We also have new virtual machines and smart contracting applications like Ethereum and like EOS. And what these new applications are going to allow us to do is to create decentralized autonomous organizations or organizations that run on a blockchain and leverage the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning. And with these technologies, we can create new societal structures and organizations. This is referred to as a governance or governance model. Now, I want to be clear, there's a difference between government and governance. Government, as Jeff got just finished pointing out to some degree, is this idea that a small group of men should have a monopoly on the initiation of force over a large territorial region. That is the Austrian view of governments, specifically Murray Rothbard's view of government. Now, governance is this idea that we can opt in to a network or to a system in order to more clearly and more cleanly organize society and allow it to function in a way that's more coherent that's more sane and that is easier for us to understand and to grasp. It doesn't have all the unnecessary, unnecessary violent complexities that governments have. So that's the key point. Governance models are opt-in models. So we have this situation that's cropped up where we have experimental governance models that we're all allowed to participate in if we want to or we can reject participating in. Now I want to provide a really quick example of one of these governance model based ideas that can run on an Ethereum blockchain as a decentralized autonomous organization. So there was an economist or there is an economist at George Mason University. His name is Robin Hansen and he came up with an idea for a governance model in society called Futarchy. Futarchy is based on this slogan, vote on values and bet on beliefs. The idea is simple. If we engage voluntarily in this network, we vote one time on our goodwill, on how happy 
we are with the current system on how well it performs. And this is essentially a metric. And what happens after that is a prediction market is created and we bet on the policies that are going to be implemented in society. So let's use the banking example again. So this idea of the banks being too big to fail. So the idea there is, should we bail out the banks? On a prediction market, there would be two assets created, one for a vote yes and one for a vote no. And in Futarchy, whichever asset gains the most value on this market is what takes place, what happens, what gets put implemented or put into place. So let's just assume that it's hopefully don't protect and save the banks. This token would have the most value and then the people who bet that this would take place are rewarded with the cryptocurrency token. They get the money. The wrong vote is reverted and people receive nothing. But again, key point, this isn't something that is coerced on people. People aren't forced to use this particular model. This is just one of many competing governance entities. And just for example, just a couple of more that you can look into. There's a model called holacracy. There's another model called liquid democracy. And there's all sorts of different other models that will be created, governance models. For anybody who wants to read more about Futarchy, I recommend reading the Ethereum creator's Ethereum blog, Vitalik Buterin. He wrote an article called An Introduction to Futarchy that is really a really good read for this material. So now I'm getting close to the end of my time. I gotta finish up here. And what I wanna say is that we are definitely entering into new territory right now. And I want to remind you all that this isn't something, this technology that's changing from a government to governance, isn't something that's happening far off in the distant future. This is something that's happening right now, that we can embrace right now. This isn't something that we can forget about or go home and go to sleep and pretend that it's not happening. It's happening now. And now we can vote not for some kleptocrat, some sociopath, or some bureaucrat who thinks that they know better than us. Now we get to vote actually on our goodwill through a kind of participatory apolitics. We get to engage in a network and be part of that network and make sure that our voice is heard. And if our voice isn't heard, we can exit those systems at any time. Thank you.